A quarter. Yeah. 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 She's, she's, she's like, like this is great. Hands off the computer. I think we're live now, guys. If right. we can start the program today. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the Daily Blue Realty Connects Long Island with my co-hosts. I feel like a host here, even though this is your show. Mike Lardolino and John Fitzgerald. It's really good to be here today. We have a full room, a nice audience here. Our programmers, Olaf and Jeff and Brittany, Brandon, and we have a very special guest in the room, uh, Jim Rupert from Safe Harbor Inspections. We're really excited to have him here today. Fun day. Before I start questioning you guys about what's going on with the government shutdown, how, how's everything been? It's been a little while since I've seen yeah, you. Yeah, we haven't it's seen you. Two weeks. It's been two weeks. I don't like it. Yeah, it's yeah. been a couple of weeks. I don't like it at all. And, you know, we, all we get to see is you on Facebook <laughs> and at another event and another event. And it's interesting how much life can change in two weeks, too. Right? Like you said, the government shutdown, yeah. changes in interest rates, and all the things that happen so quickly in our environment that affect everything we do. In yeah, in just industry. two short weeks, we've seen the rates trickle. We've seen the government shut down. Yeah, what does the government shutdown mean for for the real estate community? Currently, not that much, but eventually, it could have an effect on the real estate community. It could have an effect on sales. It could have an effect on getting deals closed, mm -hmm. uh, getting information uh, that's needed to close a deal. Uh, Why? Well, basically, the federal the federal government has control of a certain uh, pieces of information that are necessary in real estate transactions. Title searches and different things can be held up. All kinds of things can change based on this. Uh, and as even if uh, someone who's buying a house has a position that is now shut down mm -hmm. and they're not, what that happens could to affect them, right? their income yeah. and their sure. uh, qualification for the mortgage for the house that they were going to buy. So it will have ripple effects. Yes. Really yeah. disturbing. So, and I'm hoping that it, they'll get through it and be done with it in uh, you know a couple of days, and we'll be back uh, to you know a stronger uh, consumer confidence because it does affect consumer confidence, and that's a big issue. Sure. We were just getting to a place um, in the real estate industry where right. buyers are out there, sellers are getting their homes on the market. There's a lot of transactions happening. A lot of people are, are moving towards their dream and what they had hoped for in the past years. So, real estate was looking very good. And consumer confidence has a lot to do with that. Mm -hmm. So the shutdown changing the stock market and changing consumer confidence can have an effect on us. And then the other piece of the puzzle, John, is the, the rates trickled down in the last two weeks. And that has two sides to it. One side is when a rate goes up a little bit, some of the stuff in the pipeline of being getting ready to be closed with banks has to be reevaluated. Because the rate changed, it might pop somebody out of a particular program, if you will, or a type of mortgage they're going to get, now the banks have to reevaluate it, and the underwriters in the bank have to reevaluate it. In this case, we saw the rates trickle down a little bit. Right. So it had two different effects. It made it a little easier for the stuff that's already in the pipe. However, it also took a little bit of the sense of urgency out of the buyer the pool buyers. to say, you know, I can wait a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe, Maybe I don't have to jump in because just two weeks ago, they were feeling a sense of urgency. Maybe these rates are going to go up. Now they see them trickle down. And that, coupled with what we just talked about with the government, they're feeling a little like, we've got a little time. Sure. And then just off air, we were talking about, John, maybe if you want to expand upon the timing from a seller's point of view and what's about, to, there's going to be a page turn yeah. again where the urgency is going to come. Well, I think that this is a temporary shift in rates. Right. The rates are still going to go up. It's just a matter of when they're going to go up. Okay. So a buyer shouldn't be at ease that, oh, they're going to start to go down again, and I don't have anything to worry about, and this is great. And the same thing for a seller. If there's a, uh, a seller that's looking to sell their house maybe by March or April of next year, it should be on the market now. Okay. It should be on the market right now. That's good that you said that. Yeah, because, because I think more and more houses week. come on after the holidays. That's a it. shift in the rates can change mm -hmm. things. So you want to be the only house out there, uh, not the house that's out there mixed in with the other 100 or 200 houses in the neighborhood that are for sale. Now is the time to put your house on the market, and the buyer should not become complacent mm -hmm. with the rate changes okay. because they will go up again. And when they do, you can't go in and say, okay, I still want that old rate. I want, right. the, one that, I want the one that was a quarter or half a percent lower. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. What do you think it means for a house to be on the market a long period of time. Do you think that that is, um, does that send a message to potential buyers that there's a problem with the house or 
maybe not priced right? Or do you think that putting the house on and, uh, you know, where is it showing? There's so many things. Uh, there uh, are how, many factors. How's going sure on the market yeah. in the right sweet spot, if you will, which is really the right price range. Right. In any market, regardless of rate or government, or if a house is priced right, the buyer pool knows it. Mm -hmm. And they're going to come in and they're going to make an offer. So your question, if, if, if I'm understanding you correctly, is I go on the market and I want to go on a little high. Mm -hmm. And the agent agrees with you. When you go on a little high, yeah. well, how long do you stay high? Is the house on a long time because you're motivated to sell? Or are you really not so motivated? Is the house on a little bit high because back in 06, John's house up the block got more money and you don't want to see yourself get less money and you really have an amnesia from when the agent told you this is the mm -hmm. price range in 2013? Mm -hmm. Is it that you've gotten some feedback and what you were told by your realtor is that you really should have cleaned up the backyard and maybe you should have taken the wallpaper down in the kitchen? Now he's talking about my house. <clears throat> I know, I feel uh, like he's exactly, talking directly yeah, to me exactly. too. Come on. So, so there's Come on. many factors to it. He's How ready to pick on me today. <laughs> right. However, it's, 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 there's several factors to it, but if you're okay. on for a period of time and you're getting feedback and you're not getting action, sure. you need to reevaluate based on the information that's come back to you. And I'm sure your realtor's a good realtor in communicating all that to you, then you should be adjusting your price yeah. to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. and and then then you need to accept today's world. Mm -hmm. Technology is here. The, the prices, the terms and conditions of every sale that took place is out there. Mm -hmm. You need to take the facts listen to them, evaluate your position, and make a logical, intelligent decision as to what to do. Well, we I mean, if this was my dad sitting, you know, I want what I want, I don't care what the paper says, you right. know. That kind of mentality, it's done. It doesn't work. There's right. too much information out there, and a buyer sees the same amount of information. So mm -hmm. if a realtor comes to you and says, this is the price range for fair market value for your home, and this is the marketing we can do to get that, you can't pick an arbitrary price and say, I don't care, somebody will buy it at this price. Mm -hmm. Because the buyers have the same information. Right. So if you want to sell, you have to get your house for each But if you have a good realtor, they're going to tell you that. And I guess you have to have a relationship with them. Realty uh, Connect. With realty, realty Connect, you are <laughs> Every <laughs> realtor I've met here. <laughs> Honest and a good relationship. Well, that's all that I've met here. And in, in all sincerity, you guys are, are the epitome of um, honesty and integrity, and I've seen that with all of your agents, and that's obviously indicative of what, well, thank you. who you are. It's really exciting, though, to have Jim here today to talk about inspections, because I think that even <coughs> when someone buys a house, um, the, the buyer then fe has to have a relationship with an inspector that feels, they feel safe, which oh, yeah. is the name, I guess. Jim, you'll have to tell us that why you picked that name, but they have to feel the, the the connection oh, it's very important. Yeah. You, you, and you to make sure that they paid the right. Well, the seller and the buyer have now agreed on a price. Right. Now we're going to do an inspection. Let's pick a quality inspector. And we're going to talk about, you know, Jim is an excellent inspector. He's been around a very long time. We're going to have some questions for him. And once that inspector is part of the group that is trying to get something to the contract and to the closing table so everyone's comfortable, right. picking an inspector is key. Yeah, yeah, it's really important. But before Jim comes on, I want to remind everybody that they can call in or email to Realty Connects 516-702-5406 or email <coughs> any questions, realtyconnectsli at gmail.com. Please, we will answer it live. Or um, again, if you have a suggestion for any topics on the show, or maybe you even want to be a guest. Some people have been asking me to be your guests on the That's show. That's exciting. You're We're getting quite a following. That's exciting. Um, That's I think great. that you know some lawyers you have brought would up you, stuff. Would you be willing to share it with another woman again? Yeah, I think that's a great <laughs> idea, definitely. <laughs> Um, but our producers are telling us that we need to bring out Jim. So I need to share the stage here with Jim, who has got uh, really a Jim. great way to about Jim. it. Jim, good to have you. Good to see Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you guys nice know each other from your wife? Well, Is that how you here. initially met each other? Um, from Mary? Um, I <laughs> heard about know. Jim from his inspections and his professionalism and the way he handled himself in the field. and. Uh, his credentials are impeccable, so... Um, it wasn't because of Mary yeah, Alice. Yeah, Mary Alice, actually, his wife is an agent of the company, right. yes, but uh, Jim's reputation is uh, is fabulous exactly. in the industry, sure. so... Thank you for making that clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a man of his own. He does, yeah. 
He's not one of those people that has to say, hi, I'm, I'm here with her. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But that must work really nicely that you guys can talk about the field and talk about what's going on and, of course, watch the show every week to hear what they have to say, right? And well, you know, it, it uh, embeds me in the real estate industry right. even more because right. I hear what's happening. I know what's going on from the agent side, from, you know, all sides. So it, it does, it definitely helps. I think that many people don't really know what a home inspector does and how important it is. So, can you tell us a little bit about? Yeah, give us big picture your sure. your, well, your world. When somebody, our perspective is when somebody is getting a home inspection. First of all, they've gone out, they've looked at a bunch of houses, they've finally nego finally gotten to a point where they like the house, they've negotiated. Guess what? They want to buy the house. Mm -hmm. So that's our perspective. So we just basically take that that role, uh, and, and as we talk about things, we're assuming that they're going to go through the, with the transaction because there's a lot of things to explain as we're doing the home inspection. So uh, the big picture is for us to 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 explain to the buyers what they're buying okay. in an honest, uh, fair, professional approach, not in leading in any one direction. Right. And at, and you know, they're buying the biggest investment probably of their lives, right. and, and they're nervous. Yeah, it's when important. When they first get out of the car and they see us, they're, I don't know what I'm getting here. Is there a big problem? Is this going to be a money pit? Right. So at the end of the inspection, they understand what they're buying. So they're, they're getting some peace of mind. When you, did, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No, I would, so many questions. How do they decide, how do they decide like, well, I would, I would say most okay. of the clients uh, pick an inspector by referral. Okay. okay. From from good agents, from their attorney, from friends, mm -hmm. uh, from accomplices, uh, uh, you know, other people in their job, and that's that's usually how they they get them. Because there are some websites again, where right? you can you can select. Okay. Uh, how do you, how do they go about? You mean on the internet? Yes. So the internet is a, a way to get a vehicle to get information about an inspector. Definitely. You know, can let's you say XYZ agent says uh, so and so is is an inspector. I think most of the time people are using technology and they're going to go to that person's website okay. and get a feel for what that person is all about, what their company is all about. There's also a, a website called Long Island, A-L-I-A-S-H-I, -A -A and on that website there's uh, people that are members of this association, which is a pretty tough group to become a full member. So it's like an accredited group? Right. But you, you have to have, and what was uh, absolutely. You have to have <laughs> at least 250 inspections. So you need to have experienced oh, wow. and done 200, at least 250 inspections to be considered to be part of that group? Correct. Okay. Okay. And you have to have yeah. passed a pretty tough test called the National Home Inspector's Exam. Okay. And that's uh, like a two hour exam and it's pretty specific and you have to study and you have to know it. Right. So if you've become a member of this group, at least there's a level of confidence. Okay. But I'll say 250 inspections is not really a lot. No, it does, it's in this not. Business. It really it's isn't. Not. You really need a thousand or so before you're really, know really, really confident. Really. How many years have this. you been a home inspector? Ten years. Okay. I started the company ten years ago. Tell us when you walk out of a car and you're with um, this new couple who really doesn't know and they are really looking to you. To t do you, are you turning on faucets? What makes? What do you do when you get out of that car? What are you looking at the gutters? Are you, what is your job like? Uh, great question. But uh, when people first ask ask us, what are we going to do? Yeah. Picture yourself at the driveway, at the end of the driveway, and what do you see? Yeah. You see trees that might impact the house right. after Hurricane Sandy. And you are looking at big, that. Absolutely. Oh, great. Uh, the roof, the siding, the chimneys, the sidewalk, the driveway. All of these things. You drill in to that. Yeah, all of these things right. on the outside, and we walk around the house. Of course, drainage around the property, which is extremely important for water in basements. Uh, and then on the inside, same thing. As you walk around the house, you look around. What do you see? Mm -hmm. Walls, ceilings, floors, appliances. You know, the kitchen, well, bathrooms. Right. All of that stuff has to be looked at. So, right. about how long does it take to do an inspection? And I'm going to have a follow-up because so, it might dovetail together. And what is the technology that you use today? To do inspections because having been in the business a long time we've watched that evolve too right so can you talk about that a little bit sure i, I would say the average inspection is somewhere around two to three hours so two to wow. three hours depends on the size that's of the great. house okay so it's the age of the house that's probably mm -hmm. the longest time the buyer will have spent in that home that's right. they're there well the buyer's with you Definitely. Typically? Definitely. Wow. Yeah. Sure. The, the buyer, buyer should buyer. always be at the inspection. So now this yeah. is the longest time they've been in the house. They're actually spending time in each room if they choose to with you. 
and continue on how you do it and how it actually evolved? Well, uh, the first thing we do, uh, technology has a big factor these really? days, and the camera is, uh, you know, plays a big part. I don't even use a pen. I don't bring a pen to the inspection wow. because it's all camera. Mm. So the first thing that we do is we take a, maybe 20 pictures of the outside of the house just so that there's as is pictures. And then on the inside of the house, we take pictures of all of the rooms. And that's the first thing that we do mm -hmm. during the inspection. And the buyer is now looking around at the house. They're not following us around because it's just taking pictures. And then we take some notes as to the type of roof, type of heat, type of uh, electricity. And then we start the inspection okay. with them. So you do a visual? Right. Well, throughout pictures, right. now you say, okay, I'm going to roll up I'm my ready. sleeves and look ready at this house. Okay. So you're going to test all the mechanical systems, and you're going to look at the roof to see the longevity of it, and uh, the boiler to see the efficiency of it, and all of those the things. The electrical panel, all the outlets, yeah, right. the yeah. windows. Yeah. And on after an inspection, uh, I mean, most buyers realize they're not buying a brand new house. So there's, right. they've looked at it, they realize the boiler may be 15 years old, they realize that there may be uh, the necessity to put a roof on the house in the next five years or whatever maybe. But what might be uh, alarming to a buyer uh, that, that, that they, they would have see. a concern okay. that that's not visible, that they didn't see they on their see. initial uh, uh, look at Well, the just property. yesterday, I opened up a scuttle hole to the attic, which isn't much bigger than one of these ceiling tiles. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that I do is look to see what's up there. See, everybody's looking at you. <laughs> exactly. I took the flashlight and I look around and over in the corner it's a raccoon. Yeah. With right. two bright eyes so staring right. at me. Wow. So, you know, that type of thing happens. So that's obviously Did you something you go in happens. and say hello? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I used my flashlight <laughs> and my camera. Uh, but water in basements is always a concern okay. and mold. Uh, things that are tell me about these little these technology these laser guns these other things that you use that, that, that they help you well, see there's what you know a very cool tool is the infrared camera ah. and uh, it's small enough these days that you can carry it in the tool belt and it's a, it's a cool tool in regard that I can put my hand up on the wall stand back 10 feet and with the camera see my handprint because it, it, it picks up radiant heat so I can go to the air conditioner unit, uh, diffuser, and see if it's cold air. I can go to the radiators 30 feet away, and you see a long strip of heat coming out of them. So that's one of the great wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's great stuff. You can see moisture. You can see, oh, wow. Yes, if there's a temperature difference between a cold surface and a remaining surface, you'll see you know, where the water mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Okay. It's a very cool tool. So a home inspection is optional, correct? Uh, optional, but anybody that does buy a home without it is is, I would think is so. crazy. I would because think so. there's so many things that uh, well, even just that pointing that out. That From it, our it, point of view at Realty Connect, if an agent would come in and say they're not doing an inspection, we would highly recommend mm -hmm. that they talk to that consumer and order an inspection. I don't right. think anyone should buy a home without an inspection. Right, they just don't um, know or see things. It's, right? it, for the value for. Uh, what you get for what the cost of an inspection might be is tremendous. And sure. you're about to spend four hundred fifty, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars on a home, mm -hmm. and having it inspected. Last, very, last very week, I, I looked in a crawl space, and I see the, the main beam is sagging. And what's holding up the main beam? A car jack. So kidding? wouldn't you want to know that as you're a buyer? Because you're not looking yeah. in the attic. Because if you're using a car and you get a flat, you don't have a jack. Right. That's right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And over time, might that car jack start to drop a little bit? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Wow. Mm -hmm. But That's fortunately, scary. a lot of these things, uh, yes, they're critical, they're important, but they're not that expensive. Right. Yeah. So, and that's important for an Especially inspector to be able to point out, put it in proper perspective. That's a really good point, is that Someone might see the car jacks, I'm not buying this house. That's not really, all you have to do is replace it with the right That's support. Right. The right. house is fine, it's a good buy, it's still a great deal. It it so be. it's not that alarming, but if you, what if you I think you're saying is if you don't know the car jacks there, when it does fail at some point in time, then it could be. be yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the yeah, raccoons in the attic yeah. came in from somewhere. Right. And and everybody everybody needs a Michael has yeah. Michael. Everybody <laughs> needs a pet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so before so we before we run out of time, I have one I want one more question. Okay, so the inspection is done, you're finished. What what can I expect? I, I'm now the seller or the buyer. What's the what what's going to come back? How are we, how are they going to know? What's the information? Well, they're about delivering the information. Right. Yes. It, yeah, it, exactly. it used to be that the inspector was secretive about 
whatever he found during the inspection and would only talk to buyer. That's old school. Okay. Now, and there's also she's now too. That's that's right. <laughs> she's that's right. right. That's true. <laughs> so now you know it's transitioning, and, and I think our company, not to brag, but our company is probably one of the first that does the following. What we do is we take all of the pictures, we put them into the computer, and we invite everybody to sit around the table. Right and, after the inspection. Right after wow. the inspection. By yes. everybody, you're talking about the buyer and, and the, the seller, seller and, and yes. all the everybody the involved buyer, in the transaction. The seller and the wow. agent. That's right fantastic. after the inspection. Right that's after that's kind of fantastic. embarrassing when you brought up the uh, carjack. Right. <laughs> well, you know, it's one of A lot of times the sellers don't realize what is happening. And, well, maybe they did it a long time ago and forgot. Right. Well, they hired somebody to fix it. Or maybe the they didn't right. buy your safe yeah. harbor. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> when they like bought. for example, there could be a main, what's called the main service entrance cable that comes in the side of the house. That's where it's carrying all the power. That wire can be, very often it's deteriorated and frayed. The seller has no idea about this but it's an important safety concern. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we take the picture, we show it on the computer, we explain it like I just did, and the seller, I didn't know that. Right. And so now yeah. everybody is on the same page. Sure. We go through all of the pictures okay. and uh, explain it you know, calmly, coolly, collected. That's a great idea, I love that. So that's what that. when, the, when we're done, everybody's on the same page. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, if sometimes it's a negotiation right there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something you you're bringing the facts to the table. Right. right. Yeah. You're just bring you're presenting the facts, right. and you know the seller is now learning something. The buyer is learning something because also when you're there, I'm sure you're showing them where the main shutoffs are, mm -hmm. how to turn. You know, it could be their first house. They don't know what, how to use a breaker box. Right. They don't know how to turn off the sprinkler system, right. and so it's a, it's a whole education as well. That's and, right. And safety wise, I would think even if the buyers aren't going to buy the house, at least. The homeowner wants to fix it anyway. Right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Or, or, or let's say we yeah. found termites. Right. Yeah. The, the seller would. So would you say, do come up with definitely, it? Definitely, if we found termites, the seller would say, I didn't know about it. Because if they knew they had termites, they would have dealt with it. Right. Mm -hmm. So now that they understand that they have termites and we show them a picture, they're going to they're gonna fix it. They're going to get it. Sure. Good. Yeah. You know, so it's good. I'm really enjoying talking to you. But Brandon, Brandon is telling us that uh, we and have to move I'm gonna, to I'm to One quick thing that I've I learned over the years. To say too. Yeah, because okay. then I don't have to have those. Uh, no, you know, it's Take only two something. left. <laughs> we only two minutes. But one of the things that I found out over the years, and I've been doing this for a few years, is that. Um, yeah. All right. So I've been doing it for 35 years. Okay? <laughs> Not a big deal. A lot of gray up there, but it's a lot of good grays. Is people buying new construction sometimes don't get. Right, an engineering report absolute, on it or right. an, an inspection done, and I think that's a huge mistake. If you're buying a brand new house, new construction, just built, I still mm -hmm. think you should have an inspection done. And how do you feel about that? I completely agree. In fact, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we did one, and we turn on the sink in the kitchen, and we hear water pouring out of the bottom of the sink because they never completed the, the plumbing. So that that type of thing is just wow. Nobody does it on part, but and there can be little things, little glitches that happen on a house. And right. I've saw it once with the uh, radiant heat that wasn't co connected properly, and now it's tiled over and it's done and it's in the floor, and that heating system would not have worked after the buyer moved in mm -hmm. because there was no way to see that or know right. that that right. radiant heat. Right. So unless somebody turned it on, exactly, and tested it. Okay. it was never tested. Mm -hmm. It was never tested. Um, I really love your stories. How, how is it? Do you have any stories that are, are different than the ones that you already told us about? I mean, the car jack is pretty funny and the raccoons. Anything else? Well, uh, using the camera is always enjoyable because, uh, let's say, you know, we're, we're doing all of our walk around the outside the house doing some preliminary stuff, and everybody now is in the kitchen because everybody hangs out in the kitchen. Right. Now I'm taking my pictures on the inside of the house, and I pull out the camera in the kitchen and say, you want your picture taken, right? And everybody just scurries, because <laughs> nobody wants their picture taken. That's it, except for one one time, the my client was a model. Oh. And she said, no, you can take of my course. picture. And she's, <laughs> oh. That is great. So, yeah, we have fun, we have fun during our inspections. You, we you, try to keep it light. You know what I love? You sound like just like these great guys, that you love your job. We do. And, and I is, love hearing there's that. There's a lot of satisfaction in, in our job. I, I just want to work with you now. I, I just want to call you for some reason. We'll buy a house. You know, we're looking. We're definitely looking. And I'm trying to avoid even eye contact with Brandon, but we do have to get to our listings. <laughs> um, I do want to mention that if you want to ask Jim or the guys, these wonderful guys, anything, please email RealtyConnects. L I at gmail.com or text call 516 702 5406. Let's get to our listings today, guys. 
Farmingville is our first one by Karen Mazzola. Oh, I want to say that I've seen a lot more of your signs up everywhere, guys. You've got it. You got some huge amount of listings happening. Tremendous right amount of inventory coming in. So if you don't see something on the screen today that you'd be interested in, yeah, we probably have it in our inventory. Just get. Yeah. Give one of our agents a call, call us, and we'll get you set up with somebody who can help you. Can we do you. something new um, next week, maybe? I'd really like to talk about the open houses that will come up for that weekend. As sure. A show. I'd really like to talk about that. We yeah. actually have a mobile app that you could put on your phone. And a website. And Which it'll I love take that you app. to the open houses. You could push one button and it takes you to the open houses for that, that day. It's fabulous. Cool. So if you're interested in purchasing a house, you want to know about open houses, you should have that get on that your app. phone. And, and one of our agents can get that for you. And to brand it behind the camera, Maybe we can put that up with the website. Yeah. He's shaking yeah. his head yes. Okay. Yeah, good. We definitely can. But not today, folks. He so doesn't, tune in next, tune week. In next yeah. week for great yeah. ideas. But if so, you have any ideas, this make is sure a you call super us. house. This is a, a beautiful ranch. Look at the size Nicely of the rooms kept. in this. It's kept perfect. It's two hundred and ninety-nine nine. This is a home run. This house. If you're looking for a ranch and you want to be in a great house that doesn't need a lot of improvements done to it, this mm -hmm. is the place to go. And St. Jim's School District. And that's Karen Mazzola. Get in touch with Karen at our office. East Northport. There's I another love one, great. On Valerie in East Northport. This is another ranch, and we're getting calls for a lot of ranches. A lot of people downsizing. They want one level. They want to have a, a, a ranch. This is a fabulous home. Very and nice. this one's Betty Davenport for 410. That was supposed to be mine. Really? Oh, really? So I'm going to take yours. You, okay, go oh, ahead. Oh, you were take, we're taking turns. <laughs> okay. And who's going to take the next one? Jim, let's have Jim speak. <laughs> Jim, they, 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 no, we, we have a listing in, in, uh, in Lindenhurst. It's a beautiful high ranch. It's right in the village. Needs some updating, so a little bit of help. It's got great bones. Bones means it's in good shape, well built. It's clean. It's priced very well. You can walk right to the school, the train, the stores. 200 amp service in the house, new roof, goodbye. You can have this. It's can fine. I have this one? Yeah, I want to talk about this. Nice house. I love it's this house. It's really nice. And I just read on the front cover of Newsday today, said you won't blow our brick house down. So this is a brick house in Setauket. So it's a three little pig's house. It's a three little, yeah, you're not blowing that house down, Michael. I don't know if okay? the homeowner wants you to say that. Brick construction is one of the most sought after uh, I love styles it. of construction because of the strength and the construction. But it also it's looks really good. Do you agree, Mr. Inspector? Inspector? Well, wind isn't going to knock off final <laughs> side. <laughs> wind can knock off final side. It's not going to knock, knock off the brick. Yeah. 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 All right, we have Jim's road on brick. And look how beautiful that kitchen is. Oh, That's yeah. a great entertainment. Center Island is a great place. Stainless yeah. steel, the yeah. beautiful pool. The backyard's gorgeous. Who's yeah. taking this one, Michael? Okay, uh, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. You can have this, one. this one's right That's on the water. Heading. And a fantastic location. Uh, it's got 200 foot of bulk heading. Multiple boats can park there. 1.8 acres. Great, Big. great house. And uh, a very unusual thing on the water, you don't see a full finished basement with high ceilings and, and high ground. So that's a great house. Uh, don't miss that if you're looking for water. Yeah, I just saw the uh, one of the people running the show behind us turn around, and he's writing down the name. Oh, li wow! Yeah, like he likes it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that. our Olaf. Mm. Without Olaf, our this show so, wouldn't exist. So here's so, one in Medford. It's five bedrooms, two full bath colonial. It's redone. It has the potential to be an accessory apartment. What? Uh, with the proper permits, which means that it's probably already there in place. New burner, new siding, new roof. They the redid everything. The dumpster was right out front. Yeah, so they just, just finished did it. redoing this house. Looks, everything is brand new. Oh, yeah. It looks excellent. It's a great house. Great Two hundred and sixty-nine nine. Don't miss this. This won't stay on the market very long. This seems like a great so investment. That when he jumps in and steals from you. Yeah. Well, I mean, right. this one. <laughs> This is a beautiful, beautiful house. Another redone house in mint condition, excellent colonial, spacious rooms, hardwood floors, has everything you would hope to find in a new colonial, and it's priced fantastic. 388 dollars oh, yeah, yeah, It's just a great that's house. Pretty. I've never seen a house priced at 388 dollars Someone likes the number eight, right? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. That's a, might be a some lucky different. thing involved. All right. Yeah. Um, cool. This is a great backyard. Look that's at that. That's really house. nice. That's a great house. What else you got for us? Stony right Brook? Wow. Here's one that's in Stony at Brook. 389. It's out there at 389. It's four bedrooms, three village schools. It's under 400 to get a house in Stony Brook right where this one is. Great buy. It's redone five years ago. I know. It's a great house. <laughs> Updated oh, three years ago. Really good house at 389. So you hear about that. End of all. Smith Town. I 
too because Slipton is where I live and I really I really like the agents, Paul and Mary. Paul Muso is a good friend of mine. And this is on Mount Pleasant Paul Road. Cute, He's cool. so cute and so nice. Mm -hmm. he, very nice person. Um, so this is on Mount Pleasant. Look at that beautiful kitchen. Everything looks really Really fairly new, so it must be. Oh, we're done. That's oh, just okay. some of our we properties. That, that was the uh, just some of our properties again. We have thousands. I say thousands of uh, listings, available inventory, every style, every price range, every community you want to live in. So if you didn't see something you like today, give us a call. We guarantee we'll find you the home of your dreams. Because you guys guarantee, because you we really do guarantee love because your work. we worked that hard to get it done. Yeah. I love this show every week, and unfortunately, we have to say goodbye. But thank you, Jim, for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks, Jim. Good information. Really excellent. Good information. A really excellent. And as always, I love you guys. Do you have something you want to say today? Don't pick it on me. Good. 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 What, what is wrong with you? Come on. <laughs> He's ready. I like the ponytail. Oh, thank today you. I like the ponytail. Thank you. Okay. I needed something. Thank you guys for joining us today on The Daily Blue with Realty Connects Long Island. Thanks to our studio audience today. And of course, for everyone behind the scenes, um, Brittany and Brandon, we're really lucky to have you guys. Thanks for joining us. And if you need any homes, make sure you connect with Realty Connects.